everybody and welcome to the National Horse Racing College um, live question and answer session. So we are here until 8pm this evening, so if you're joining from Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter or YouTube, hello everybody. Um, so, today's uh, live question and answer session is all about the 12 week residential foundation course. So those that are interested in um, doing the course or they'd like a bit more information before they make their mind up, this is what this live session is for. So, how you can take part is, um, if you put your comments in, uh, sorry, your questions in the comments, so whether you're watching on Facebook, Instagram, etc., pop a comment in of the question that you'd like to answer, uh, like us to answer, and we will hopefully answer it live with our two guests here. So, our two guests is Claire Edmonds from, um, well, from National Horse Racing College. So you are the senior training instructor here at the college. Yes. Um, and we've got Matthew Clark, who is the training manager here at the college. So live and breathe, National Horse Racing College, and racing in general. Yes. So can you give a little bit of an introduction into uh, yourself and your career in racing and what brought you to racing? So I was sort of born into a family that was already involved in racing. So my granddad was a trainer and my dad was a jockey. Uh, so I then went on to follow in the family tradition. Yeah. I came here uh, for the 12 week foundation course. It was non-residential at the time and luckily I just lived down the road. Yeah. So although I'd been sort of born into racing, I'd never ridden a racehorse. So I got so much to learn. Um, so I came here and learned the basics, then I went on to my work placement and I was fortunate enough further down the line after a good 18 months hard work, two years mm -hmm. hard work, I was fortunate enough to then get my apprentice licence out. And I rode about 16 winners, 17 winners, and then I went into the more head girl, travelling head girl and then eventually assistant trainer side of the, of the racing industry. Yeah. I then was fortunate enough to have be sort of cleared about a job going here, a part time job. Somebody that I knew that worked here mentioned it to myself. Yeah. And I decided to leave racing and start to sort of develop myself more or less as an instructor. Yeah, pass on all your knowledge and skills to yeah, the next yes, generation. Yeah, and it, it's, it was so local, and I've got a young family at the time, so it was yeah. a perfect, perfect transition for me. Yeah, so I've been here 15 years now, so... So um, a lot of students go through. Lots, the class yeah, there, lots, yeah, lots and lots go through, and it's just lovely to see their starting point and where they finish at the end. Yeah, and many that have gone on to, you know, get their licences and go on to yes. achieve big things. Yeah, so. and some have, but it's equally as nice to see, the, you know, on Facebook ones that are leading in the winners, and mm -hmm. they're enjoying riding out, and, you know, yeah. it's, it's being involved in the industry, that's, that's a yeah. good thing. Just wondering what they're doing. Yeah, yeah, they yeah, love your job and you yeah. never work again. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And Matthew, yourself? <clears throat> yeah, so obviously a little bit different to Claire. My family had no interest in horses at all. Um, you know, so I started riding when I was eight and just heard the horses and went to my local riding school and kind of got hooked onto it. Yeah. Um, once I finished my GCSEs, I was sort of looking about what I'm going to do next in my career. Um, and again, time, sometimes trying to find out what does the equine world fulfill in the career path. And then we found out about the racing industry. Um, and I went down to the south, uh, where there's the British Racing School, where I did my um, nine-week course there, uh, which we did to level two, completed that, uh, then went into my placement, um, and then uh, where I got my amateur license out, and then uh, semi-professional semi conditional license out, uh, so I did the jump jockey route. I was a little yeah. bit too tall and slightly too heavy for the flat. Uh, I'd love to have done the flat, um, but I, as a See, I'm quite long, um, so yeah, so I was about six foot, so anyway, not a very successful career in, in that side of things, but learnt a lot. I did my level three, which allowed me to actually get into university, yeah. uh, so gave me that credit points, went into university, did my sports coaching fitness degree, and again, uh, a job came up here as a training instructor, um, I then managed to get a job, um, applied, and I've been here only eight years, not as long as Claire, <laughs> uh, not, yet, not yet, not yet, but again, it was just a great opportunity to sort of put, give back to the industry, it was such a, something I was always really passionate about, and 
who was the great thing that I did when I was young and yeah. at 16, uh, gave me independence, confidence, and I can handle life and challenges that get thrown at you. So it was to give that back and help people potentially go into the industry and, and yeah. gain that bit of success or whatever it might be, it was a great opportunity. And then later down the line, um, got given the opportunity to become the training manager and sort of been doing that for the last couple of years, which is yeah. a sort of different type of role, but I have my wonderful right hand lady here who <laughs> supports me in that position. Absolutely, um, yeah. So yeah. Wonderful. So you're both from, you know, different, um, in terms of growing up, you know, different way you grew up with racing yeah. and grew up with parents that weren't horsey at all. So, Absolutely, yeah. And that goes down to a lot of the learners that arrive here as well, doesn't it? You know, a lot of learners will arrive with years of brand experience, whereas some will have arrived and have never even touched horse before. Yeah. And that makes no difference at all, does it, to, to those that arrive here. So they will go through the course um, the same as, as each other. Yeah. So they so if you've say if the learners watching now that have uh, have years of, of riding and they've done pony club, riding clubs, etc. Um, what would you uh, advise uh, them to do in terms of those that have uh, never had any um, riding experience before they arrive? So it doesn't make a difference, does it? No, it doesn't. And the the good thing is because like like our learners, the horses are all very individual as well. So we have some that are, are beginner horses and then there's ones that, you know, as you're progressing, you step up and step up yeah. onto different horses. So if those that have done quite a bit of riding, as they progress off the very beginner ones, they're going to be getting stretched and challenged. Yeah. Um, and the, those that are, are beginning are going to have the horses that they need to be on to learn from yeah. the beginning. So we can keep moving so, you know, all learners are moving forward continuously. Yeah, absolutely. And those that have um, experience mucking out, etc., they'll be slightly ahead of those that haven't uh, mucked out before. Naturally, you know, if you've mucked out stable, you know what to expect, don't you? But at the end of the day, this course allows you to um, teach on a very much, you know, a one-to-one -one basis as well. Being a smaller college with only a maximum of 45 students at any one time means that you can work one-to-one uh, -one with them as well. Chelsea, yeah, it? I mean, we, we try as best to give everyone that same opportunity and give them that bit more tuition and individual feedback that we can give. You know, every group that they come on is no more than a group of 15 learners. Yeah. So, again, it allows us to give that, like you say, individual feedback, that bit more occasionally, that one to one where we can slow things down and explain things. Yeah. I guess my advice if someone's never ridden horses before, and, and we've had people who've never touched them or something, yeah. and, um, is probably get some relevant experience, you know, just to make sure it is for you because it is a lifestyle choice. Um, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, if you love working out in the environment, in the cold, rain, summer, come shine, yeah. and get to get work with horses and you get paid to work with horses, I think it's, it's a very fortunate job to do. Not many people, I think, can say that they, I guess, do jobs that necessarily they do because it pays, it maybe pays well, but it's not necessarily their true passion and love. Yeah. So if you can wake up every day and work with horses and get paid to do that, yeah. it, we're quite lucky individuals and, and horses here, you know, that give give us the, the joy that yeah. we get to do. But yeah, I think my advice would be to anyone that who's never done the thing, if they can get a riding lesson or even go to the local riding school yard, yeah. just Saturday morning, Saturday morning yeah. doesn't any any anything extra will just help you just get a feeling for what it's like to work with horses. Yeah. Yeah, um, or the RDA as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, which yeah, is just yeah. you know our door stuff, isn't it? Absolutely. It's, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So a few more things then about the foundation course. So um, if anyone's watching that has no idea what the foundation course entails, um, so a few points. So it's for anyone age sixteen and over. You can be a rider or a non-rider on the course. Um, the it's a residential course. So you live here at the college uh, for twelve weeks, occasionally going home to see your family um, you um, you have the, the opportunity after the 12 week course um, to go and do a six week work placement as well which is what we'll touch on later um, and the the cost of the course is um, in its entirety is 500 pounds so for those that have a household income um, slightly low then we do have bursaries available at all uh, as well so the, we don't like to put boundaries in the way of anybody coming to do this yeah, yeah absolutely so anyone that's got an income 
less than twenty six thousand pounds. They're entitled to bursary. Um, so again, that again allows them to pay, cover for the course. Um, and if they're in the sixteen to eighteen bracket, they're also entitled to the tra uh, travel or equipment. So. Um, again, I'm pretty sure it's about £300 in terms of the, the title to, so that helps to pay for the helmet, breaches and stuff. So we don't like to put you know, boundaries that people will think, oh, you've got to have money to, to go into this yeah, industry. Yeah. Yeah. Um, absolutely not. There are ways that we can recruit that funding. Um, and again, that would come through the application process and interview paperwork that would filter through and yeah. you know, they, then, um, they can fill that in. Obviously. For bursaries, we just need evidence to to, to show that that they, you can prove that you are earning yeah. less than that amount, and just from an audited perspective. But yeah, yeah. Coming back to the point is that yeah, we make sure it's open and people can get into it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. So we've had a question come through. Um, somebody asking, do I need to know how to tap up on my own? No, no, you don't. Um, when you start at the foundation course, um, you start at the very beginning. So obviously there's people that will have been tacking up for many years, however for assessment purposes towards the end of the course we sort of teach all our learners a specific way so that um, it covers all the standards for their final assessment. So they will be getting um, shown how to tack up initially and then supported with the tacking up yeah. uh, every day that they tack up and if they are a rider they'll be tacking up every day, sometimes twice a day. Yeah. And if they're a non-rider, they will still tack up daily because we often have horses that are going out in later lots to the gallops or to the indoor schools, so they're going to be ridden later. So sometimes they get tacked up and put on the horse walker. So yeah. it gives them the opportunity to tack up as well. Yeah, absolutely. It's all about teamwork, isn't it? Yes. And yeah, the, 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 the horse race industry as a whole, you know, it's yes. all about teamwork. Yeah, it is, definitely. So yeah. a lot of it is the, the people that you don't see Behind the scenes, you see yeah. the people the oh. success on the TV, <laughs> don't you know, the jockeys, trainers, etc. Yeah. It's a lot of that is the people behind the scenes. Behind yeah. the scenes doing all doing all the work, yeah. definitely. Day in, day out, exactly, yeah. So you touched there on um, the non riders. Yes. So on the course you can be a rider or a non rider. Yes. Um so can you tell us a little bit about what non riders would do on the course? So the non riders their morning starts exactly the same as the riders. So the, it's registration seven o'clock, everybody down the yard. Uh, doing the mucking out, tidying the yards, putting horses on and off the walker, um, turning some of the horses out. So that is standard, that's what they all do. And then it's after the breakfast at half past nine, so they all come back at ten o'clock. And then after the non-riders will have a lecture, um, they start in week four, but they start with a, a sort of a, a lecture on more horse husbandry, so it could be to do with worming, you know, different grooming programs for horses, it could be uh, different non ridden exercise. So they'll have lectures and then they'll do some activities with the horses. So yeah. this at this time of year it's clipping season, so it may be that they're asked to hold horses for clipping. Yeah, of course. Um, there's always horses for turning out and bringing in. Mm. We also have new horses arriving, and if they are um, needing bringing back into work, we often start with some light lunge work, yeah. so they get to do, to learn lunging. Um, they do uh, uh, pulling mains, trimming yeah. rider pads. So there's quite a lot for the non-riders to learn and develop the skills yeah. in. Um, and it's like you touched on that behind the scenes. Well, your non-riders are often people behind the scenes from yeah. the riders that are. You know, doing yes. the work and all the prep work in the yard to keep the horses get ready to, to then be ridden. So. Yeah, of course, yeah. And it's yeah. like when you go to you know the races and you see the racing grooms leading off. Yes, up, yeah. Um, you know, they're there hours before um, yes, any are. public arrive on the race course and looking after the horses, getting them ready for, yeah. for best turned out, hopefully they could they could win. Um and it's all about, you know, turn them out to a high standard and that's what Teach here, isn't it? You know, yes, send them out yeah. to, yeah, to we high standard. Teach them the, uh, the paddock clothing and sort of how to fit that and quarter marks, how to flat manes and tails and that. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So a lot of people think, you know, if you're not riding, what are you doing? A lot, isn't it? Yeah. And then that's before there's the horse health checks. So yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. there's lots to do. So, can you talk us through then a, a typical day for 
um, for riders as well as non-riders. So what would, say, a rider typically do during their day? So normally, they, well, registration is 7 o'clock. They're on the yards looking out till and doing looking out, sweeping up, tidying the yards till approximately half nine. Yeah. Then they go for their breakfast, they come back at ten o'clock. Um, if they're a rider, they get the tack and they tack up and they pull out anything from twenty past to half past ten. Um, so then they go, they'll ride one or two lots out. If they're non rider, they'll do the other activities. Yeah. And then by about quarter to, quarter to one, they obviously the yards are all swept, and then quarter to one we feed and they go for lunch at one o'clock. Then the registration is back at two o'clock, and then normally two till three o'clock or two till half three, it's a lecture. So this could be a practical lecture or a theory one, yeah. um, depending what lectures they've got. Sometimes it's sort of like the horse clothing or feeding and watering, colours and markings, yeah. there's loads of different lectures. Yeah. Um, and then they go down and do the yards from about half past three till half past five. So it, that's the time that they groom the horses, check them over, do the beds, um, give them the hay, fresh water and then feed them at about half past five. Busy days. It is, yeah. it doesn't ever yeah. yeah. It doesn't yeah. end there. <laughs> so then they have their tea at half five and then they're back at half past six for the evening programme. Yeah. So this runs from half six till eight o'clock and it's on a Monday to Thursday. Yeah. I think the good thing about it is there's, there's nice structure to it. Yeah. So people that like routine and, and things like that, you, you know where you have to be, what you have to do, keeps you busy. Um, there's a sense of purpose, a sense yeah. of drive. Um, you know, a lot of people that, again, in the education system, maybe would not like to when they come onto this course because they're learning about, I guess, things that they like to enjoy and learn yeah, about. But equally, you know, there's that, uh, you know, you know what you're going to do, what's coming around. And yeah, I think anyone that has a sense of purpose and sense of like, I'm doing something that I'm working towards, yeah. hopefully, you know, you're motivated and engaged. And yeah, I think the program it is. Real, really robust and full, yeah. um, but it needs to be like that. But equally, hopefully, when you come here, you like that, and you know you're tired in the evening, so you can chill out and, yes. and, and socialize. But equally, then you're back into your rooms, ready to yeah. for bed, and yeah. cracking back on on, on the next day yeah. for the it, it, new challenges that are faced. So yeah, it's it's good. I think it for me, I always like that. I like the sense of what I'm doing and the purpose I'm. Yeah aiming towards and yeah. obviously we're trying to train people to get ready for the racing industry okay. and get them ready for you know what working life is going to be like and fortunately yeah. that's the next big step for a lot of young learners is you know you're 16 you're living, living moving away from maybe the first time away from home and we're now trying to get you ready to then be potentially employed at, you know yeah. after the placement so it yeah it's challenging but I think a lot of learners you know, when they go through this experience, often say that even though it was challenging, there were times where they didn't think they could see themselves getting through it, that it has been a really good experience and has prepared them well. Um, yeah, they don't want to leave. Yeah, often. <laughs> yeah. 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 And we replicate here what, what happens in a racing yard. You know, yeah. Comparing them, um, although racing yards do vary, yeah. ultimately you're preparing <clears> them for that, for that structure, you know, the early mornings, um, and getting out there and cracking on with things. Yeah, and, and, and you know, we're there to coach and give advice and give direction and help them to get to that point. We've also got to be that that firm hand in the sense that we've got to give them that constructive feedback yeah, and say, yeah. oh, these are things you need to work on, but if you do that, you're going to get there. Um, otherwise, you know, the, if we don't give that sense of uh, direction and what they need to improve on, then they kind of um, you just sort of hit that plateau. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the good thing about here, we've got, as Claire mentioned, we've got a variety of different courses yeah. that we can challenge you on. So, you know, when you're starting off on the quiet ones, build up your confidence. And as you progress through the course, we can then put you on more yeah. difficult horses and horses that are going to be what you potentially might be riding out of the industry. Yeah. Even though it's a level one qualification, they're not, you know, the horses that you might be passing as a level one rider, we have to they divide level two horses and level three horses, which I'm sure we'll go on to talk about those placements because yeah. they're the type of horses that you're going to be riding more in in the day day yeah. out in a training yard. Yeah, so, so that, yeah, yeah, absolutely. That work placement. Yeah. yeah, yeah, 
Fantastic. So we have a question here from um, Charlotte Sanders. Um, she says, when it comes to mucking out, will learners be assigned a couple of courses that they muck out for the entire course, or is it a different course, courses each day? It's what we do, we do a ride list and we change it weekly. So we, when you first start as a junior, you get one stable to muck out. Um, and then once you progress to an intermediate and then a senior, you often get two. So we do try to mix it around a little bit so that they are getting the straw and the shavings so that they're able to work efficiently with both beds yeah. by the end of the course. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we, we do mix it around. But we have like, when you first start, we have the junior barn and that has got the level, all the quiet level one horses in. It's like the right hand barn. Yeah. So we, all the quiet horses are in there and we mix them around weekly for the first four yeah. weeks. Yes. Then after they go to intermediates, they go into the next barn, which is the middle barn, and then eventually the left hand barn. Yeah, work their way. Up yeah, work their way. So they get to yeah. work with all the horses. Yeah. Um, so, you know, throughout the twelve weeks. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So just touching on um, a lot of people that before they arrive here, they say, well, "What um, GCSEs do I need to be?" So we obviously don't require any academic qualifications to be here. No. Um, for those that um, don't achieve a level four above an English and math, so they would do functional skills here, wouldn't they? Correct, yeah. Of course. yeah. So the good thing about that is it's um, very much um, around courses and racing, isn't it? The, the functional skills. So, um, so those that aren't necessarily academic or like you know, being in classrooms and they enjoy horses and horse racing, they are more likely to enjoy functional skills that's, that's based around um, the horses and the horses. Yeah, we try, we try and tailor it to the vocation. Um, obviously, one of the mandatory requirements is that you have to have an entry requirement to get in onto your apprenticeship. So for, yeah. for a lot of learners that, again, haven't got a level four, don't panic. You know, the functional skills team here do a fantastic job. Yeah. Um, they'll do the initial assessments and see where you're working at. And then once they know what you're working at, they'll have, usually it's like one-to-one -one sessions or small groups yeah. so you're not in a class of like 35 that you might be in a normal exactly. school yeah. situation yeah. Yeah. so you, you know you're almost getting effectively like a private tutor in a sense yeah. uh, and they're aiming to get you through your level one functional skills and hopefully if you go and get through your level one functional skills that then allows you then to go and start your apprenticeship so you have to have your level one um, and then <coughs> hopefully aspire then to go on to your level two so that when you go on um, for a senior group uh, apprenticeship, they, they've got that, or they're working towards doing that so that they can achieve it or prove that they have done it. Um, we do do some standalone diplomas, so some people that don't necessarily get the functional skills whilst they're here and, you know, really, really struggle academically with that. We do have options, but um, there's only a small pot of funding that we get um, from BHA, but typically, you know, we do really well, um, they're not really intense. Um, we try and fit it around the course as well, so like we don't take them out of the riding if they're if the riders. Um, and again, often it's quite a nice break sometimes for a lot of them. They you know get to and and like I say, Dave, <coughs> Dave and them base a lot of it around the location, so yeah. you know related to horses or feed bags and you know uh, yeah. racing and, and try and make it understanding why you need it as well. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Wonderful. Um, so we've had a question, really good question here from um, M. She says, how many places do you have on each course? So um, obviously we're quite a smaller college compared to um, a lot of the bigger colleges that are out there. So a maximum of 15 learners is not on any yes. on, on one course. Yeah. And we have three courses running at any one time. So that's yeah. a maximum of 45 learners. Yeah, so we have a, so typically when the course starts, there's week one, uh, the juniors, week five, the intermediates, and then we've got the week nines at um, what we call them seniors. So, yeah, the, since basically as you enroll into the course, you are here and arrive, there's already two groups here, which is quite nice because often you've got people that can help you, guide you, and yeah. maybe yeah. have similar experiences and struggles with the first part of the course, yeah. which is good. Um, equally, you know, sometimes they give some. I guess cheeky advice and sometimes say, oh, watch this horse, watch that. But no, yeah, it, yeah, so we have basically three three groups at any one time, but um, which is, I think, it's a nice thing. And it's a, 
you know, keep, we're pretty much 365 yeah. days of the year. Yeah, yeah we don't stop. Absolutely. Yeah, so, you know, uh, we even have, you know, recently we've had groups that come through the Christmas and New Year um, yes. period because, again, horses, you know, you can't just turn them off like a computer. Absolutely. They need 24 hours care. Um, so, we, like we mentioned earlier, we kind of have to reflect the industry because they'll be doing that as well. Yeah. And usually, yeah, either work the Christmas or New Year break. Yeah. Um, exactly what we do here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's Christmas yeah, year, yeah. yeah. It shows you know resilience as well. The learners exactly, that, yeah. that are here and you know and commitment as well. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so then, touching on the horses a little bit. So the horses are graded here, aren't they? So in the in the stables. Yes. And yeah. when ridden. Um, so if you, can you talk a little bit about the horses? So they're all uh, well one, <laughs> Damien. They're all. Um, X-ray sources that have had a career on the track. Of. Yes, the the majority, yeah, they're all X-ray sources. We might have a couple that just that did point to point, yeah, um, and never got under the rules, but um, the majority have all raced. Um, yeah, we've got an amazing equine team. They're diverse. They're all different shapes and sizes and colours. Lots of different characters, mm -hmm. but that's you know that's good because that's what you're going to get in uh, in industry. Yeah, for but us. for the grading of them, we have level ones, level twos, and level threes. So the level one reflects the level one foundation course. So they're the ones that the level one learners when they first start as juniors, they're the ones that they're going to be um, looking out, grooming at even stables and riding. Yeah. Um, some of them might be a level one ride, but they might not be level one in the stables. So there is a little bit of a crossover. Yeah. And some are more complex, but um, so the level ones are the easier ones, yeah. and then the level twos they're the ones that have just got a little bit more. Um, maybe they're a little bit keener on the in the when they cantered in the indoor school or on the gallops. They might be a little bit more forward. They might have a little cheeky book now and again. So they'd be classed as more level two. And then the level three are the ones that are sort of more like what you would get in a racing yard. They're quite forward, they will have a little bit of a book and they might have a spin, and um, you know, they're, they're, they're sort of more forward. Yeah. So they're the ones, a lot of our level threes do the specialist courses as well, so they're young, younger, fitter, and more able to yeah. sort of do the schooling and jump out the stalls yeah. still. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the levels, levels of horses, there are uh, signs up around the yard as well uh, it's in, in the um, tack room to let the learners know the different levels of yeah, horses. Absolutely. And, and Claire does a really good job because she, when she does the placement um, conversation, which you know sometimes are difficult discussions to have, whether they're meeting the riding pathway, and, yeah. you know, she shares the information with them about what horses they should be riding or aiming towards if you want to be placed as an out and out rider. Yeah. Um, you know, there's loads of regular feedback, you know, they get reviews at week two, seven and twelve. Yeah. Um, so obviously they the kind of we're more, we try and make sure that, you know, grading whether track, whether on an off track, um, so that they're getting feedback and know whether they need to be um, so there's no confusion, hopefully yeah. there's no confusion, yeah. of what they're trying to need to aspire towards yeah. doing to get to, to, obviously to help secure, I guess, the job that they hopefully would like to go and do. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So just touching on the, the riding side, then we, we do have a weight limit here for those that are interested in the course being a rider. Yeah. Um, 11 stone, wearing full riding gear. Yeah. Um, so can you explain a little bit about um, why we have a weight limit? For those that are interested. Yeah, so obviously um, we have a, what we call the beginner pathway, which as you said is 11 stone dress to ride. Yeah. So that's for anyone that we, uh, we deem as probably have a lack of experience, maybe the novice or um, struggle with some of the sort of basics, but equally anyone that's um, over, the, over that weight limit, we, we offer now um, what we call a content pathway which is for anyone uh, over 11 stone. So that's, hopefully that, again, when you get riders that are, are a little bit heavier, uh, for instance, I'm 11 stone and four pounds. Um, and again, you know, I, what we tend to say, I, when I'm riding, I don't ride heavy in the sense that I'm landing on the horse's back, I'm, yeah. I'm sort of generally, hopefully balanced still. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but again, it, it's essentially saying that they can do that. But to do that, we normally identify that in the interview, Stage, yeah. 
And then if we identify that they're competent, then we'll ask them, okay, we need to see some video evidence and we're going to offer you a riding assessment. Yeah. We'll then invite you here to do that and assess you to see if you meet that competent pathway. Because um, again, you know, there are quite, you know, for instance, I'm six foot one, um, you know, for me to lose a lot of weight is it, quite hard. Um, and a lot of national hunt trainers and stuff often have sort of bigger, stronger, individuals or heavier individuals or, and the horses tend to carry that type of weight anyway at, in the racing um, but again if we then deem you not to be competent to do that we would say right you need to then lose the weight uh, as you can imagine the horses you know carrying a lot of weight and if you're unbalanced and you're banging on their back that tends to give the horses back problems and then we have to kind of get physio treatment um, so again for the welfare of the horse, the of the horse yeah, where yeah. it always comes down to, yeah, yeah absolutely. And um, again, you know, that is kind of the, one of the industry demands, isn't it? It's, you know, yeah. if you look at what encompasses racing, it is a lot of it is to do with weight. And certainly when you turn yourself into a professional, uh, you start off as an apprentice, you, you know, you're going to have to monitor that and, yeah. you know, treat yourself as an athlete, as any elite yeah. sportsman would. So. Yeah. There are some constraints, but I think we've got that new potential pathway for people that we deem competent. But yeah, the main pathway is again, lemon stone beginners. Yeah. And to be fair, even if you're competent and you're under a lemon stone, you're still riding again. It's just allowed yeah. us some people that we felt that I think we had in the past that we could potentially have obscuring or not yeah. allowing people to apply. So Yeah, good riders, slightly over, yeah. Yeah, type of thing. Twelve stone is the yeah, because it, obviously it is horse welfare. Yeah. yeah. So that's twelve so stone ready, so ready to ride. So uh, yeah. Yeah. you probably work on about seven pounds under. Yeah. 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 By the time they've got their boots and the body protector. Yeah. And yeah so, that, so it's eleven stone or twelve stone yeah. ready to ride. Yeah. yeah. Wonderful. Um, so we've had a question here from um, Sonia asking, um, how do you pick where learners go on placement? So that's a good one that we can touch on. So, um, so in terms of placement, so. Learners will do the 12 week foundation course here, yeah. and then those that have successfully completed the course will then um, go on to a six week work placement. So, can yes. you tell me a little bit about the process of, of that? Yeah, so, around week six, week seven, no, week, yeah, week six, they fill in a learner placement questionnaire. So, they have like a careers lecture and they fill in a learner placement questionnaire with ideas of roughly where they think they would like to go and what type of yard they would like. They then get handed to myself and I then have a look through them and then have a placement meeting with them all individually as to where they think they would like to go, yeah. what type of yard and also we sort of review what current level they are at with their riding yeah. um, and at this stage we would then be looking as to whether they will be placed in the yard as a rider a developing rider or a non-rider and yeah. um, so that normally happens around week nine and then obviously there's still a few weeks left for them to progress and move forward a lot with the riding so yeah. nothing is set in stone at this stage but we just discuss where they are currently at here. yeah just, just, just like our heads up for yeah. them and then we hope that by the time that i start looking into placing them which is about week 10, 11 and then obviously into the week 12. Yeah. So the last two weeks that is when I start to phone trainers up and email them. Yeah. It would be nice to start and sort it in week 8 or 9, yeah. but at that stage you don't know where they're going to be at the end of the course. Yeah, of course. You can't, yeah. you can't you know, sort of like get 100% and say they're definitely going to be on track or they're definitely going to be on, you know, on level 3s or 2s. Yeah. So yeah, you have to sort of keep working with them to get them to keep progressing and moving forwards. Yeah. So then after that we after the discussion I then start phoning trainers up. Um and so the relationship don't you with you know with trainers all over the UK? Yes, we, yeah we do and I think you know there's a lot of trainers out there that have had some really good learners from us yeah. and you know I think that they do respect and appreciate that what we're trying to do is get people into the industry, you know. Absolutely, yeah. That's that's our aim, that's our main aim. Yeah. Train them well and you yeah. know kind of do they are giving them the stuff that are um, you know, they've got a lot of skills and knowledge of the racing industry. Yes. Yeah. But yeah. they're also going in that placement to learn more 
Um, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the, the employees that they have as well. And everyone just works as a team and, and kind of learns. Yeah, I mean, in, in, we're not going to be the finish art community here. Yeah. I remember when I left and the school, um, it, I, I, there was a lot of small that I had, I had to learn. Yeah. Um, and again, you know, we, we set you up with the basics and get, hopefully get you there to get your foot in the door. Um, and yeah, there'll be, you know, there'll be a mentor or employee there that will help and coach. And I think that's what Claire will, you know, will say. Like, you know, we often listen to them and say, they might have some ideas about the arts they might go to. And Claire might say, well, yeah, that sounds great, but you know, we know this yard's a very quick, you know, fast run yard. And, yeah. Uh, you've got to be very switched on there, whereas this yard might be worth more suitable, but it often, you know, it, it will lead you to hopefully gain some more confidence and then you might be able to move into. So ultimately what we want to do is put them into the best location that's going to be successful for both, obviously, to maintain that, like you Claire said, reputation and employer relationship as well uh, and equally so the learner stick, sticks into it because we don't want them to just leave after two yeah. weeks and Absolutely. what was the purpose of that yeah we try yeah. to prepare them don't we yeah. as best we can and, yeah. um, you know realistically let them know exactly what it is going to be like yeah. and then yeah. you know we they have a sort of like a little test a day around the week 11 where the roving tutors come in yeah. and they sort of take over from the instructor team a little bit and they'll observe them and coach them um, on the gallops and if they're a non-rider then they'll take them off lunging something in the in the outdoor school but they observe them throughout the day and they'll do a little chat with them as well about what it's like and where they think they would like to go on placement and just give them a few pointers and uh, yeah. obviously they're still in the yards and going into the yards every day so yeah, exactly. it's good yeah. for them to also speak to the learners about what it is like because you know we although we've got the industry knowledge and we've all worked in the industry we're not actually currently working in the industry we're yeah. working here whereas our own tutors are the 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 tutors day day, day, yeah, yeah they're going into the yards they know the yards the trainers the pace of the yard yeah. the mentors so you know we i am sort of led by them a little bit as well a lot <laughs> when it comes to placing <laughs> yeah absolutely so leaving here after 12 weeks is just a gateway, isn't it, to, yeah. to you know, what else is out there? It's just the very start of Definitely, what's yeah. to come, so yeah. preparing them for that. Fantastic. So, um, if somebody lives, say, in the Heights of Scotland or down in Cornwall, um, or they live here in, in Doncaster, um, in terms of residential, so it's residential for everybody, even if you live half that on the road. Um, so, can you talk a little bit about the the weekends off that learners will get whilst they're here? Yeah, so the, there's a weekend road to that we devise. Um, typically, in racing, it's every other weekend. We try and facilitate that, but because of the way dates land and graduations, and we lose a group, technically speaking, during the twelve weeks that you're here, you only have four weekends off. Um, uh, but that's because either we need to make sure the horses are covered and looked after. Um, but again, your weekends off start on a Friday, so usually you do deep room clean, so that's our, um, and then the residential staff will check it, make sure your room is immaculate. A bit of dress. Yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. Uh, and then uh, it's usually that, that point, which is usually about half, five, six o'clock, the parent or guardian or whoever's coming to collect them can then take them for the weekend, they then have Saturday off. Sunday, but they need to be back before 9 pm um, and then sign back in, yeah. ready to start on Monday. Now, some learners, as you said, are from Scotland or a little bit further afield, um, qualify for long weekend early. So, again, that usually there's a meeting that's discussed if, if they qualify that, so we just check on distance and we've got a policy on it. Uh, I won't bore all about the details, but essentially, if you qualify for it, you can then leave on a Thursday. Yeah. Uh, again, deep room clean check, and then leave up about half five to six o'clock, and then you come back on the Sunday, um, and then you be back at nine. But you're only entitled to two long weekend leaves. Yeah. Um, again, because that's because it's all to do with guided learning hours. It's not a boring thing, but <laughs> we have to, as, you know, we get ordered to check. You have to complete a certain amount of guided learning hours for you to complete the qualification. Yeah. So that's why there's certain restrictions on that. Yeah. And also in the yard, 
you know, you're not going to get a free weekend, are they, when you're out in, in the workplace? No, no. You might be leading your horse up yeah. for the races, so yeah. it's the sun. Yeah. You certainly don't get Saturday mornings off, so although they're only getting hmm. four weekends off in the 12 weeks, they are getting the Saturday mornings, but in industry you go work, work Saturday morning, you get Saturday yeah. afternoon and Sunday off. Because Saturday is a work day often, there's lots of big meetings on Saturday, yeah. and if everybody's gone off racing, who's going to care for the horses at home? Absolutely. So it's yeah. another yeah. thing. Yeah. It's another yeah. thing to consider. Yeah. You know, when you're going into this industry, be prepared to, you know, work on social hours yeah. sometimes. Yeah, yeah. 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 flexible. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, a few questions here. We've got um, from Janet. So, how long after the interview do you wait to start a course? Which is a good question. So, yeah. in terms of time scale, yeah. so those that um, are applying online, yeah. so they submit their form to us. So, what's the process following that? So, again, I've, so typically once the application's gone through, that goes to the admin team. The admin team then will usually email them. I don't know exact date or how quick that response is, but usually within a couple of days of applications or no more than a week. Yeah. Um, then once that's, they then offer an interview day, usually it's a date that suits them. So we, can, we have various interview days throughout the year. So it's not just because we offer that, you then can't attend, that's the only one for, yeah. throughout. Obviously once the interview is done and completed, um, we tend to um, say that within 10 working days, you'll then receive either an offer or um, saying the reasons why we don't think we can offer you a place at, on the course. Yeah. So yeah, we, we, we try and be as timely as we can, but like I say, after an interview, we always normally say within 10 working days, you should have an answer to the, yeah, your interview, that yeah. process, yeah. So obviously we have a course starting every four weeks. Yes. Uh, yeah. To the month. Um, there is quite a demand for that, so especially those that are wanting to start a course in the summer to follow in the GCC year, yeah. we usually work on about nice twelve months in advance for that. Don't yeah, we? yeah. Um, so advice would be to just get your application in. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, if you go on the website and look for, um, you can see all the dates on there um, of our course start dates, and just get your application in. Yeah, so nice. There's no, there's no certain time frame. It's just. Yeah. To avoid disappointment of, of getting on a certain course, it's, you know, getting an application. Yeah. And, and often what we'll say is if, if those dates are full, and normally the interview app, you know, people know the dates that's happening, and generally they're already full, but we can sometimes put people on waiting lists. Yeah. So if there's an opportunity, someone uh, pulls out, we can then sort of then put you in where, where the space is then potentially yeah. open. So, yeah, yeah we we'll try and be flexible, but yeah, the sooner you... If you're hoping to come in like July or August time, you know, September, yeah, it's, it's, it's really busy. Um, you know, most of our 16 to 18 year olds are in those blocks. Yeah, um, naturally following the GCC. Bridge, yeah, yeah. so um, we often have our 19 pluses at sort of back end and later of the year. Yeah. Um, yeah, so yeah, that's basically, yeah, get, get it in. Yeah. yeah. And then, and if you're unsure, come on an open day. Um, yeah. You know, they're, they're on the website in tell you when to, to come. You'll yeah. meet the wonderful Amelia here and, her, <laughs> and Zoe who are here and show you around. And it's a good day as well. You yeah, get to see. yeah, lots, yeah. Absolutely. So, absolutely come on, on one of those days if, if you're thinking about it. Hopefully, yeah. that then inspires you to put in an application. It's really straightforward. Yeah. And even if you're, you know, you come in and do the application and, and you get offered, you don't have to take it. There's no, you know, it's not like you're signing your life away. It's, uh, yeah, absolutely. you know, if you suddenly think it's not the right environment, then yeah. it's no loss and yeah. sense that we've just got some details and yeah, it's yeah. simple. Good. You know, come join, come on and see what you think. Yeah. You can see it in its entirety. Absolutely, yeah. The ins and outs, absolutely. So, um, just jumping back to um, work placements, we've got a question here from Sonia. Um, when learners are on their six week placement, do they live on site? So, at the yard? Yes. Um, if, obviously, if they live close to the yard that they're going to be going to and they can travel in daily that's that's a win-win that's yeah. brilliant yeah. however a lot of the time that doesn't happen so it's quite a big it's a huge factor when i'm looking for placements yeah. it, they need accommodation and yeah. um, we're not very fortunate that within the industry there's an organization called racing welfare so racing welfare do accommodation in malton midland newmarket and lambourne which is fantastic, however, you need to be 18 um, 
to qualify to go into racing welfare. Yeah. Uh, so anyone that is under 18 yeah. can't, and anyone that's over 24 is is not able to leave. So it's 18 to 24. Um, apart from the one in Newmarket, which that's, I think that one's open up for older. Yeah. But, um, so you work your magic and, uh, yeah. and, and do everything behind the scenes. Yeah, so, <coughs> and often learners will say to me, oh, so-and-so's looking for staff and this yard's looking for staff. And I'll say, but have they got accommodation? Yeah. Can, can you get to the yard or not? Yeah. So that is a big factor, finding uh, yards that have got accommodation yeah. for the learners. Yeah. So, yeah. Absolutely. Wonderful. Um, so let's talk about fitness. So we talk a lot uh, on our social media during open days yeah. about fitness, which is what a lot of learners dread. But it is so important, isn't it, for, for when they arrive here? You know, yeah. You think about it months in advance before you start a course. Yeah, no, and, and we we can't bang on about it enough. But even that interview, we ask, what do you do for your fitness? Uh, after the interview, you get handed out a bit of fitness pack in terms of what you can do to help improve uh, that it is usually the first thing most people feedback to us is that they can't believe how much they physically struggle yeah. within the first two weeks. And yeah. you know, if you've got the emotional challenge of being tired, being physically tired, uh, struggling with the handling of horses, it, then I always think it has a strong correlation to your self confidence. Yeah. You start doubting yourself am I capable of doing this? I'm, I'm struggling at this, but how am I going to cope with it? So Anything to do to help strengthen yourself is really key. And you don't, like I say, you don't have to go to the gym, you don't have to fork out loads of money to do this type of thing. No. You just have to literally do body weight, core exercises, and just some cardiovascular activity will help no end with riding. You know, I always think you've you got to remember, we're training these horses to be athletes. You've almost got to treat yourself like it. Absolutely, yeah. Um, and, you know, Often, if, if you're getting tired, the horse isn't getting tired, and they're going to keep on galloping. Yeah. Um, you know, so biggest advice at any time when we have open mornings and stuff, like that, you know, and we're doing simulated demonstrations, is we always say like, yeah, do something, do yeah. something extra. Anything's going to help. Yeah. We don't have a. We do do fitness tests. Yeah. And we do them at the start of the course, uh, midway, and at the end. Yeah. Now there is no sort of uh, pass or. Um, fail type thing so yeah. you know don't worry you know if you don't pass the score or get a good score it's not going to lead to your uh, departure from our course yeah. but it's it's really good that it gives them a sense of where they're progressing and often that feedback into the review so often we'll say look the reason you're struggling to ride these horses and, and stuff like that you can see in your fitness scores that you're lacking some upper body strength um, and, and your core was weak, but your cardio is good, so you're able to keep yourself fueled up and going. But actually, when you're on the keener horses, yeah. you're lacking that ability to hold them together, and, yeah. and that then stops your progression. So yeah, yeah. exactly. It's, it's all about progression. Isn't Absolutely. It? So I think any you know, my biggest advice to anyone is just you know, start if you, if you don't do any exercise, go out, and start for a walk. You know, the next thing, go for a jog. The next thing, start going for a run. Start doing squats, planks, press ups. You know anything with core. You can you can literally put it in YouTube and just put core workout exercises and yeah. perfect because yeah. you're Doing right. Yeah, 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 you can yeah. do it. You don't need a big space, and um, honestly, it will make the world difference and, and make your time here much more enjoyable and hopefully, yeah, and, and potentially avoid injuries as well. Because um, unfortunately, we do have um, unplanned dismounts and. Things that happen. Yeah. You're working with, I guess, an animal. And yeah, absolutely. That machines are it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why all fitness comes into it. And yeah. And it helps us through the day. And, and and often, you know, a lot of the riders might watch us the instructors ride and go, "Oh yeah, that was really great." And that horse didn't do anything. You know, and we pull up and we're out of breath. And you know, <laughs> we tell them like, "Look, you know, I, we don't ride every day, and you can see." How, how tasking it is and, yeah. um, and you've got them skills already to ride yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it takes your riding to that next level because you, yeah. you, you can have the ability and ride with good finesse and you have that skill set but again if your fitness isn't there you then hit that plateau and then yeah. you hit, hit a certain pinch point and then again once you push yourself beyond that and get stronger it makes things so much easier and then yeah, yeah you don't start worrying about controlling horses you start thinking about riding them and yeah. 
But again, it's easier said than done. But yeah, biggest advice if any to you guys is to go out there. Is if you want to come on a course like this, is yeah, start doing something. Yeah. Anything's better than nothing. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Like couch to 5k. Yes, yeah, perfect. That's a good one to start Absolutely. with. Absolutely. You've got no fitness at all. It, it builds you up steadily and it, that's a good way to start. Yeah, yeah. it is, definitely, yeah. yeah. Um, so, talking about fitness then, so a lot of people might think you, know, you ride, you start riding horses and you're straight on the gallops, but that's not the, you know, how, it, how it works at all. So, can you talk me a little bit um, about the, the kind of progression that, that learners would ride with, so starting in the indoor yeah. And progressing to the gallops. Yeah, I mean, uh, so basically, the first week is, is a little slow, uh, we, we would say. You know, we're having to do some of the help and say it's the induction, all the paperwork. Yeah. Um, by the third day, which is the Wednesday, they're doing a riding assessment. We actually have a junior group that just started on Monday, they're going to be having a riding assessment tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, and all we're doing there is literally watching them walk, drop, do basic school movements on our quiet, quiet sources. And then we jot down some notes. But yeah, usually it's, uh, I think it's about four weeks they're in the indoor school, roughly, aren't they, Claire? And then usually uh, they would move on to what we'd call the gallops uh, or the cantering on our quiet horses. And then eventually they tend to be like the level one horses and stuff, and then moving on to the level two horses. And then we start challenging them in those environments. Yeah. But again, and Claire will probably give some more better examples that. Uh, we don't hold people back as well. Yeah. So if, if there is someone that is showing really competent and advanced skills, yeah. just because they're in the junior group, we wouldn't say, right, because you have to wait four weeks before you go to the gallops. If you're showing everything that we need to see yeah. at week two or three, we'll then wouldn't hold you back. We'd then put you out with riding yeah. out on the gallops with the intermediate. So, yeah. And so allow you to put... One to one as well, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. And, you know, it's the individual progression, isn't it? Yeah, it is, yeah. very much, yeah. Which is good, it allows us to, I guess, flex in and out. Yeah, and yeah. in the same way, if you're, if you've arrived as a total non-rider at the start, mm -hmm. and it's taking you four weeks to just grasp the, the counter, mm -hmm. um, you know, we'll keep them in the school longer, so, you know, mm -hmm. some learners may be in the school till week seven, eight, um, mm -hmm. before they get onto the ballot. So yeah, it, it works both ways. We try to sort of, you know, look at each one individually. Yeah. Probably. I think the, the important point for us to sort of make is that every day is really key for them. Yeah. So if you if you're missing uh, riding sessions or I don't know due to uh, not feeling well or struggling or or you're having not a great day and choose not to ride, which is absolutely fine. You know, we won't force anyone to do something they, they don't want to do, but you know, that, that's a day missed of riding yes, tuition. Yeah, yeah. And then, every day counts. Um, so we always say to the learners, look, you know, we're willing to help you, but we can't push you unless you want to be pushed. So, but yeah, it's, um, it, it is 12 weeks sounds long, I guess, three months, but really it isn't. It flies by. It flies by. Yeah. Uh, for us, because it, it, you know, we always go in every group every four weeks, it's like, yeah. you know, roll on. But, uh, yeah. For a lot of learners, they can't believe when they turn seniors and how quick that's gone. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so I think it's what I, what we always say to learners: like, don't waste your opportunity. Yeah. Take you know when you're here, take it by the horns and say this is give it a really good go. So that yeah. whatever happens at the end of the course, you can safely say I'm oh, giving my best efforts. And, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of opportunities throughout the course that you give learn as well. So go to the races, um, visiting yes. training yes. yards. Yeah. 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 Sales, yeah, there's the the sales, sales, yeah. Yes, yeah, so there's a lot of opportunities that you give learners to you know get out there and, and see what the industry yeah, is like. Yeah, definitely. We try to do um, get them to a uh, let you know the local trainers, or yeah. sometimes we'll go up to Midland and Malton yeah. so they get a day at, uh, to you know go to a yard and see what the racing yards are yeah, all about. Yeah. We always try to do a trip to the races. Yeah. And whenever Doncaster Sales is on, we always take them there for yeah. the morning or the afternoon. Because yeah. it just gets them to realise, you know, what the environment's like. And, yeah, what's um, up there? Yeah, yeah. And at the sales, I, I think at the sales, they've learned as much at the sales as they would at the races in one respect. Because yeah. the horses there are often quite fresh. Yeah. You know, if you're walking around the yard, you've got to be quite aware and yeah. have eyes in the back of your head almost. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's, it's a good day. And, you know, they get to see... 
guess, and, 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 uh, uh, sale, right? yeah. They get to as well, you know, players see opportunities that the people that are there that she knows, or yeah. or people that trainers are there, or it, often yeah, it can different learners, learners and sometimes yeah. we meet learners that we've seen that we've placed out yeah, there exactly. doing really well. So it's good. It often leads to lots of discussions or opportunities. Yeah. So we do like to, to do it as, and as yeah. much as we can whilst we're here. Yeah, yeah. And you've seen them learners that have progressed through the course, yes. yeah, you know, leading up at the races and the learners that are. With you on that on that day, we think well, that could be me in a year. Yes, yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's, it's it just gives them that inspiration, doesn't it? Yeah, as well. it does. Yeah, absolutely. And um, so, just touching on the cost of the course, um, there. So mentioned earlier, um, five hundred pounds the course. So that's for that includes accommodation and meals throughout the full twelve weeks. Yeah. Which works out at five pound ninety five a day. There's not much. This <laughs> is not much. <laughs> this day and age, you can get for for that. Um, every day, but yeah, that includes accommodation, um, your meals, and obviously everything that's included within the course. Um, so accommodation then here, um, so we're sat just opposite um, the accommodation block. So most rooms are twin rooms, aren't they? Um, we have the uh, a few single rooms, but you'd expect when you come for a course to be sharing with um, somebody of the same gender, the same age as you. Um, in the room with them. So, um, so with that in mind, with the with the price of all the meals, so three meals a day here that the learners would get, they're fed quite well, aren't they? <laughs> they're never going to go hungry. No, um, yeah, the, I think you know, uh, you know, the courses um, they do really well, and I think we, it, that's why I would say it's very inclusive to allow people the opportunity to get here. Yeah. Um, it, it actually costs us to get someone through this course. Um, pounds to, to fully train someone yeah. um, so you know what we're offering is, is a great deal and I think uh, and again that's why we have that um, financial support for people that can't because um, we want people in the street you know crying out the staff you yeah. know we're, we're, you know Claire and Rovers are always getting told that they're looking for staff and there's their opportunities for staff yeah so yeah the rooms are you know we do we get that information from the application that's sort of interview process where we often ask about their age, um, so we obviously make sure that people are placed in the same room, same age. Yeah. Um, obviously, ask about sexuality as well. Yeah. Um, and again, if there are cert certain things that with medical conditions or things like that, might even in lower room. Yeah. We have some that have on suites. Um, the majority of them, again, they sort of um, we would use that. I guess a communal wash area, so there's a landing, so. You might have a, you know, girls landing. There's five or six girls on landing, um, with like say, with two two of them in each room, yeah. and then they have like two showers and, or two bathrooms and, and facilities yeah. for them to clean. And then again, yeah, yeah we, we have food. There is is even a top shop in this room here. Yeah. So behind the scenes <laughs> here, I think yeah. it's open three nights uh, where they can get I guess some snacks. Um, yeah. They have tea and toast. I think it's at eight o'clock at night I think roughly so they get yeah. again um, when they're up in the morning there is tea and um, coffee or toast again in the yeah, morning at yeah. half six yeah, um, yeah I mean, options for there's everyone. lots of yeah, and again yeah. we cater for dietary needs so yeah. there's a form that they complete so for people that have anything like that we can then look to accommodate it um, what I will say is we, we do try and offer a healthy generally platter of food because um, again um, if we were feeding them, I guess, lots of carbs and stuff, it's not sort of, sort of energy fuel that yeah. you kind of need for this type of job. And um, again, what you put in is what how you feel and perform. Yeah. Um, we do have some, some certain restrictions like energy drinks, so we, we do put a ban on energy drinks because most people get that sugar high and <laughs> caffeine and running around and then they suddenly crash. Yeah. Um, so that's not really conducive to good learning. Um, so again, yeah. I, I think you know most of them is really common about yeah. the, the food and yeah. what we offer here, and yeah, shouldn't ever go unhungry or. I mean, they get three hot meals a day, and then they get tea and toast either end of the day. So yeah, they get so a yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, a few questions here then, just before we finish. Um, there's a question from Bev, who has asked, um, "What equipment is needed?" So that's. Um, presumably the riding equipment that they need to bring with them when the course when they start a course. 
So that's your hat. Yeah. It has to be a school cap yeah. with a certain standard. Yeah. So that standard is listed in our learning guide that all the learners will yeah. receive. Um, body protector, they don't need to bring with them because no. the college will loan that to them for the duration of the course. Yeah. But it's something they would need to purchase to go into um, yes. you know, work placement. Uh, not necessarily. So they, they, what we always advise them is that if they want their own body protector and they want to go, you know, the employer is and has to give, has to provide PPE. Yeah. So if they needed it and they couldn't buy it, then but what they have to remember is that that employer then has the right to keep that body protector. Yeah. So often we encourage them to say like, look, get your own yeah. body protector because well, then, sometimes they'll take it out of their wages. Yeah, they might take it out of their wages or and work out the way. And then yeah, take it out of the way to see yeah. yeah. Sometimes that's but it's down to the individual. Like, yeah, if absolutely. they want to buy them or if they want to loan them. Yeah, so they normally yeah. it's a um, jobbers. Uh, riding boots and yard boots. Um, obviously, we provide the uh, NHC uh, kit and clothing, so you have to wear your attire, NHC attire. Um, I think we give uh, now. This is me trying to think. Probably two uh, polo shirts, a jumper, and a jacket. Yeah, you can you can get extra items, so if you want to buy more, but we have a shop down uh, at the visitor centre, so that you can get the kit. We do actually, you know. Most of the stuff we actually have at the shop is what you need for the course. Yes, so. we have some. Yeah, you know, we're all. Um, we have staff down there that are. Yeah. Um, the trying to fit the fit fit to, to, to hats. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So we can correctly fit fit them. Yeah. yeah. Um, and like you said earlier, there's bursaries available yeah. to cover the cost of that. If if the cost of that um, is a barrier, then there are bursaries available. Yeah. And um, just contact us as well because we we can always um, advise and help for for learners that. Um, yeah. yeah. Are struggling with that. Um, so one more final question then before we finish. Um, from Tiana, what do learners do at the weekend when they don't go home? So what's the routine for learners then that are here? Because obviously there's a few less learners while well, somewhere at home. So uh, okay, so if the learner is um, here and, and they're down to be sort of working, they'll be it's kind of like run like pretty much like a normal yard would be. So they, they basically muck out the horses in the morning, they start at seven on Saturday, finish at um, half eleven. From half eleven till three, if they're here to work, that's their social time. So if they want to go to Doncaster with their friends and go to the Dome and or uh, French Gate or anything like that, yeah. then they can go there as long as they're back here before three PM to start the evening stables. And the evening stables uh, finished around five, five thirty, yeah, ish. Five, uh, yeah, five and then Sunday they get a little bit of lying, uh, so we start at eight. Uh, <laughs> little lying, yeah, 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 yeah. So which is, you know is always nice. And uh, again, finish at half eleven, and then again they got half eleven till three to have their social time. And if parents do want to come visit and take them out, they can, as long as we are aware of that, it's going to happen so that when they sign out and we know who's picking them up, you know, as long as parents contact us and arrange that, it's absolutely fine. Yeah. Um, again, sometimes some learners find it difficult, that transition being away from home, so if parents feel like just popping in on their weekend to work during their break, yeah. that's fine because there's no actual study or learning uh, program Happening, it's just sort of really the morning and evening stables. Caring for the horses. Caring for the horses. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And then from, from once the yard's done, then again they have the evening yeah. here to socialise. We have this lovely chill room uh, yeah. where they can watch uh, sort of TV and the various Netflix things. Thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Pong table behind us. Absolutely. We've yeah. got a ping pong table once the <laughs> weather gets a bit better. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So they've got fun whilst they're here. Yeah, yes, I, I think. Um, good yeah, really good friendships. I've, I've um, I think I've, you know, I've had a, you know, friends of life at uh, yeah. racing. Um, you know, one with one of my best men in my at my wedding, and yeah. you know, so yeah. it, it, you know, you know people from life, and yeah. yeah, even though it seems quite a big industry, it's quite well, everyone knows everyone. It's yeah. quite a nice family, yeah. and we're all there to support each other and help each other. Big community. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's nice. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Wonderful. Well, that concludes our live question and answer. So thank you, everybody, for tuning in today. Um, I hope you learned a lot about the foundation course and um, knowledge from Claire and Matt here. Um, so if anybody is interested in applying for the foundation course, simply go on our website, which is www.thenhc.co.uk. There's a button at the top to so apply here, fill out a form, 
Um, submit that and then we'll be in touch. It's as simple as that. So please get your application in um, as soon as you can. And also if you wanted to visit for an open morning, our next open morning is on Friday 16th of February. We typically have one a month, so please go onto our website and have a look at the different dates we've got available. Um, and come along for an open morning um, and learn a lot more about the college. Um, you can see a, a tour of the college, meet the horses, watch learners on the gallops. It's a typical morning, isn't it? Um, so yeah, please do come along. Um, but thank you everybody for joining us.